during the recording. Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103. Point. Hold on just a second. Um, I didn't start recording, so that's my bad. Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, uh, July 31st, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Sky, I'm blinded by the lights. He's being taken by the gods. Someone save this man. He's doomed. (laughs) I still got a glare going there, but good for radio i feel like i'm in a <laughs> what's that guys who directed star wars i'm not or star trek i'm not as uh-huh. today so right yeah quite doing this anyway, guy is one of our guests and dead pirate higgs welcome uh, western canada john richards from england welcome and so I'm from texas of course uh digital free thought radio hour is a talk radio show about atheism free thought rational thought humanism and the sciences and conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you think you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. And in not well, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. So you can imagine that you have quite a few in your town that just need to get together. Hmm. We'll tell you more about our group after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? UFOs, Loch Ness Monster, and Bigfoot. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. It's going to be a really interesting topic on folklore and skepticism today. But that, in my opinion, is the meat and the main course. I'm ready for some appetizers. How about some noodles? We'll throw it up to Andre Pirate Hicks for weekly. Vacation. All right. Our noodly lord, who art in a colander, all Dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. Mm. Fine are the meatballs and the sauces mm. and the grog whenever and ever. Raw Amen. You know, speaking of uh, uh, weird um, folklore in American history, it would be good to do an episode in the future on weird diets. Uh, folklore as well because yeah, yeah, yeah. veganism yeah. i want to know about stuff like this too so uh yeah. get ready shots are in the chamber anyway before we get into it how about we go around table see how everyone's doing today sky's still being taken by the light you know it's called a drape you could just like drape that okay okay hats heads or scoot work, to heads the work right work. either one anyway, we're talking good radio today guys i'm feeling really good one better um i'm no other way the drape right. behind <laughs> you the window behind you yeah, yeah. Like that's better. That's, that's like don't kitchen. move. Don't move. Don't move. Anyway, guys, yeah. we're, I'm feeling good today. Um, I'm at my I've been at my target weight for the, like the last month. And excellent. Uh, my weight loss journey has finally gotten to the point where I'm okay at being at the weight that I wanted to be at. Like getting out of the mindset of not being losing weight or trying to diet is a hard one to get into, but once you're in it, it's also hard to turn it off when you're done. Oh. So like, I'm finally at the point where it's like, I don't feel guilty if I do need to like eat and stuff like that. And my weight's not going up and I'm not checking it like every day. But when I do, it's at this right point And I'm like, oh, fantastic. It's not something I have to like. I hope you're giving yourself a little bit of a window there. Yeah, uh, I have a range. Absolutely. I have a range. Yeah. Absolutely. You don't want to panic if it gets a pound or two off. Exactly. And if anything, I know how to take it off, but it's really just been the adoption of a bunch of outdoor activities and, and like de-stressing in, in like really productive ways. I found like it's been a really good way to stay healthy. And these are practices I'll take with me all the way to my grave. And who knows what comes after that, but uh, I'll be ready for it. <laughs> if anything, Larry, yeah. let's throw you under the bus. How you been doing? What's going on? <laughs> With you. Under the bus here, it's just fine. I can see up between the wheels. Nice. <laughs> Thanks for the weather report under the bus, Larry. All right. We'll take it uh, but no, I, I haven't got my water cycle out. I'm guilty, feel, still feeling guilty, but it's awfully hot out there. It's mm. hard to get out. Mm. But I'm more looking forward to fall. I'll get it out then for sure. Yeah, you're going to have two good weeks and then it's going to be too cold. You're going to be complaining about, <laughs> hey, it's too cold out there. It's nice yeah. all over the road. Okay, yeah. well, enjoy the two weeks when they come. I'll tell you when it happens. I've seen the cicadas out already. I love it. I love it. Mm. Uh, John Richards, weather patterns over there. What's going on up in the grand old UK? 
Well, our buses are double deckers, of course, so being under them is a lot harder than than you have mm-hmm. in the US. <laughs> no, everything's pretty fine here. The the lady of the house is out of hospital and good. making a good recovery. And um, yeah, it, it, it's too hot, but we're all ticking over nicely. Nice. Double decker buses are something I definitely want to have a chance to ride on. That's like one of my bucket list things. So yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, they all yeah, want to I go keep looking there. around and saying, "Where's the driver?" Yeah, you know the problem is it wouldn't work in America. We have a weight problem, and I think the suspension is just going to handle it. I just don't think so. I just don't think so. Uh, we'll throw it up to Sky, Joe Sky. How you been? Good morning, sir. Good. Morning. I'm well. Nice. Looking I, good. Uh, thank you. I am keeping busy. Um, I've been having people ask me if there's going to be a book anytime soon. And I thought about anthologizing some of my essays from my blog. And then I thought, nah, I'm going to write about something close to my heart. Uh, The title of the book is going to be The Dialogue, Why Theists and Atheists Should Be Talking and Why They Aren't. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Well, good. I'm going to put talking you. online. Can we put you on? <laughs> <laughs> I think that is both the case and maybe even the answer, but uh, <laughs> good point. Good point. Dre, I'm looking forward to the book. Maybe when you get closer to a title and production, you can give us excerpts or, or we can even make it a show topic in the future. Looking forward sure. to it, Sky. Dread, yeah. Pirate, Higgs, and the Quest Arr. for Chaos. <laughs> Tell me what else have you been up to? Have you been putting like have you been changing the bags of cereal inside of boxes at grocery stores? Because parents <laughs> yeah. do that. It's like I hey, want the tricks. I gotta work on that. That that sounds like <laughs> a new tactic. Yeah. Uh yeah, I've I've actually been busy doing weddings and uh uh I also do process serving. So yeah. Um yeah, it's uh been keeping busy. I I'm likely to be heading down to the coast here anytime soon to do uh, some more work uh, in the security end of things and private investigation. And so I'm looking forward to that. But um, yeah, I've actually got a, a wedding later this morning. Um, so I won't be for the GAN review, unfortunately. Oh, but, um, yeah. No, I, I'm I'll going to Jewel Lake. Go. I have a wedding at Great. 11 o'clock uh, Pacific time. So nice. But yeah, no, everything is good. And uh yeah, staying healthy and wealthy and wise and all that. Dread, while we're on the topic cool. of like random foods that are in grocery stores, jumping right back to this, does Canada have a franchise that is that serves food or is a food product that is closely associated with Christianity or like a conservative right, like Chick-fil-A in the US or something like that? Um, no, not that I'm aware of. Okay, I always wonder how things like that fare. You know, we actually, well, we do have a a franchise here in BC. It's called White Spot. And this was started by a fellow named Matt Bailey way, way back in the day. Uh, And of course, it was White Spot. It was, uh, you know, where white people go. Um, And uh, yeah, so unfortunately, they've not um, been self-aware enough to maybe reconsider uh, the name. Okay, uh, in the U.S., that's so just called Cracker associated Barrel. to their branding. What's that? In the U.S., that's just called Cracker Barrel. No one gets the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> show. But if there were more Black people on the show, they'd be like, oh, he got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Guys, I like watching a show called Baggage. I would highly recommend it. It's an old show. It had Jerry Springer as the host. The whole concept of the show is there is a person who is about to go on a date with one of three people, but they all have baggage. And what they do on national television is air out the baggage first. And they literally have suitcases that increase in size. And the first part of the show is they open a small suitcase and it's like, I'm a cat person. Or like, I don't have a car. And you're like, okay, okay. The lady gets aside from the three bags. What's the worst baggage? And knocks that guy off the show. Then the next bag opens up. And sometimes it's like, I'm an atheist. And it's like, why is that baggage? And then the guy gets to defend himself a little bit. I'm just like, that's not baggage. He's still a good guy. And the other one's like, I brush my teeth 20 times a day. I'm like, that's a problem. That's a problem. And she'll kick off the atheist. I'm just like, why'd you kick off the atheist? Jerry Springer would say, and she's just like, I just need a man who's like of faith. And then finally, they do the final review was the biggest baggage. And it's like, my girlfriends must cook me food 14 times a day. I was like, yeah, that's, of course, he's a 22th 
brochure kind of guy, of course, you're going to get some sort of thing like that. That's what you asked for. You could have had a perfectly normal atheist and said you got the toothbrush guy who you're going to have to cook for all day long. And that, but before the guy accepts the girl, the girl has a baggage case of her own. And in the last episode of baggage, it was very interesting because she opened it up and said, I had been abducted by aliens. And the whole time you're like, I thought this was like a lady who, you know, kind of had her feet on the ground, who knew what she wanted, was ready to commit. Turns out she was convinced that she's been abducted by aliens twice. And it got me thinking because I am the kind of person who's not willing to, or who isn't afraid to say that I am convinced that there is most likely life somewhere out else out in the universe. I think if we know the mechanics of what biology here, it's and how large the universe it is, it's not a far-fetched conclusion that there's life out there somewhere. Right. Also, I would even go as far as to say that there's probably modes of travel for advanced life forms and intelligence out in the world or out in the universe out there somewhere. What I just find to be spectacular in terms of skepticism is that that intelligent life has visited here and abducted that lady on baggage to the point where she would kick off the atheist and keep the toothbrush guy. Like, why is she so interesting that they get her twice? So I want to talk about UFOs. I want to talk about Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, and other conclusions and see, are they really as far-fetched as they seem or as we tend to brush off as skeptics? Or maybe there's some validity in there that we're willing to, you know, uh, examine and, and compare. And so I'm going to throw this out to... John Richard, seems like you're biting at the chomp. I'm going to throw something out at you. What do you? What's your biting opinion on chomp. UFOs, <laughs> unidentified well, flying objects? Talk to me. Okay, yeah, there's a there's a woman. I, I think she's called Louise, somebody. I'd have to check on her name, but she claims that she's not only been abducted by aliens fourteen times, but also raped by them in their spaceship. <laughs> no. I don't. I think that's pretty far fetched that story. And I, I, unlike you, Ty, I think yes, it's highly probable that there is alien life. Mm. As to whether it's intelligent life, that's a different matter. And as to whether it could get here, that's another kettle of fish entirely. Because mm. as, so far as we understand at the moment, it's too dangerous even to attempt to a, travel at the speed of light. So we're looking at many years of travel probably longer than the expected lifetime of the person involved and mm. then why would he undertake such an arduous exercise in order to fly over or just rape some woman it's and ridiculous still have crop circles over there right they still have crop circles it's very true they just they, they still do because when you're bored you have nothing better to do than draw on corn but john richards <laughs> yeah. i have a i have a contentious point i want to throw out you i want to poke at this yeah. idea isn't it far more likely to be visited by unintelligent life than intelligent life? Because when we have a space program, what's the first animals we shoot into space? <clears throat> Humans? No. We shoot dogs. We shoot crabs. We shoot shrimp. We shoot mice. We shoot monkeys, chimpanzees into space yeah. over and over and over again until we get everything working right. Then mm. we do the human guy with the nice teeth who can come back and give a nice little yes. interview. And we don't... Yes. <laughs> If you think about it, there has to be a multitude of unintelligent life, just a cloud of it, just streaming through gal galaxies and, yes, and yes. just randomly hitting and like, planets and be like, oh, aliens are dumb. <laughs> but this space I, I is like, so great. What the hell is going on here? What's, what do you think, John? I, I like what Sir Patrick Moore said, famous, now, sadly dead British early astronomer, mm, who, yeah. who was talking about the possibility of finding intelligent alien life elsewhere and he said well i'm not sure that that's gonna happen because we haven't found any intelligent life here yet mm, i can hear that too <laughs> dread love to get yeah. your thoughts you have well um you know it was interesting uh because certainly when you were talking about the the different precursors uh to humans going into space I think at this point, um, it would be, you know, if we were ever to send something to another another star or another where we discovered a civilization, it mm -hmm. would be robotic, right? It, right. You know, because it, it, you know, it, it's unlike a human that who would have to go into some kind of suspended animation or, or one of those generation ships uh, where generation after generation, you know, propagates until they get there. Um, robots don't don't have that sort of uh, temporal restriction, so uh, that's probably the way it would go. I would think. 
So you think it's more likely, you know, I'm going to twist the question around that perhaps there's an alien life that also is well-versed in, in circuitry robotics, or maybe they had, whether they had a similar path to technology as we did, they see the benefits of why are we sending organic bodies through space? Let's just send, you know, a, a smart spaceship to where yeah. we want it to go. And yeah. we'll just collect data and feedback the information. And yeah. instead of like a giant UFO that visits us that has people walking out of it and trying to abduct people, it's just, no, we're the spaceship. We are the alien. Yes. We're just yeah. here representing. Let me interface with your internet. I'll tell you what yeah. I can do. I'll talk to your technology. And, and you know, the, the, the reason was well illustrated by HG Wells, you know, the fact that, you know, they come from a different, you know, they'd be coming from a different biosphere. Mm. Um, and, you know, if, you know, if, it turned out that uh, DNA was uh, a common, um, uh, you know, common form of uh, foundation for our life. Um, they would be susceptible to viruses like uh, the indigenous peoples were when, uh, you know, uh, the Spaniards came over and and uh, infected them with uh, smallpox. And, sure. um, you know, so it would be prudent. Right. In all circumstances, for whether we send something off hmm. or someone else sends something to us, that you don't infect the the planet right. inadvertently, right. or vice versa, right? So, to poke at this, I do like the idea of like the uncertainty principle applies also when you're looking at like very very small molecular phenomena. You don't want to overexcite it, or else you'll never see it in its base state. You'll never really characterize its its you know native state. And so if you go in and you're trying to look at organic beings on another planet, but you're an organic being yourself, you are contingent on a particular biome, you have a potential of contaminating the area that you're working at that may not be ready. Like you bring a virus or a new flu or a new kind of COVID to this planet, you're killing millions and millions of beings that you could have potentially, you know, made peace with or work with or study. So why are you going to risk all that? Just sanitize like some sort of like technology, whether it's so advanced mm -hmm. that we can't interpret it or like some sort of like mechanical structure that we can clearly see and then send it over and through deep space. And then as whenever it reaches, it's just like, oh, it's a machine, you know? Like yeah. it's it's hopefully not going to damage too much. Maybe even do long distance viewing. I don't know, there's some there's some validity to that. I can see that. Larry Rhodes, what do you think? No, I was, I've been reading some video, I mean, reading some articles and watching some videos on the fact that it, if aliens did visit us, it wouldn't actually be the aliens themselves. It would be probes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it could be uh, self-replicating, self-repairing probes that they would just send out into space in any direction. Uh, they would, if they came across the solar system, they would, uh, sorry, my daughter just walked in. But, hey, um, daughter. <laughs> but they they could be in our solar system right now. Right. 2001 had a pretty good example of that in the movie. Uh, but uh, many of the articles say we should be looking for those probes, not just listening to the signals. So I think I think that's a good idea if we could find out some way to find them. Yeah, like yeah. honestly, if you're an alien to a point where you can travel across the galaxy, couldn't you just observe a planet from like at the edge of the solar system and be like, oh, there's some new gases generating. They're making way more plastic than they used should be. All right, we'll just keep watching that. John, what do you think? Well, I, I wanted to bring up the, the possibility of there being life on Mars because... There was a conversation recently between a, a space scientist and a biologist and the, the biologist said he thought there was life on Mars because and, and it would have come from Earth because we've taken it there on our, the vehicles that we've sent. Ah. And the, the space scientist said, no, 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 I know exactly the measures that are undertaken to sterilize these vehicles before they're launched. Hmm. And and the biologist said, yeah, but I know exactly how difficult it is to. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, what do you what do you got to add to that? Oh, you're on mute, my friend. I was just going to say that there is a planet in our solar system that we know is is totally populated by robots. <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah. that's that's, a that's mars yeah. yeah and and to a small extent venus if any of those probes are still you know kicking oh, right not working anymore no nah, they're probably yeah. not no, no, they're, no. Fried. they're all, they're all yeah. fried. Poor, poor venus this is like i'm a planet too guys why do you keep going that way it's like i'm closer to you aren't i and it's like yeah but you've got an acid venus. atmosphere yeah, <laughs> yeah how, 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 would, how do we study like you frozen. you can't live up there either come on guys come on guys well, no i mean i'm a planet of love you guys love me at least 
exist there. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing is like, if there is this technique that seems to be more favorable, like probing and like long distance viewing and observation, why would, it seems more unlikely to me. That's the part that starts to draw the line of like skepticism is like, it doesn't seem worthwhile for an alien race to go across the galaxy and talk to or abduct one person when they can get far better data with undisturbing a population from a distance and just mm -hmm. recording mm -hmm. like the natural life from really far away. Um, that's the part where I don't believe when people say I'm a, I've been abducted by a van salient species that like came to visit me. It's like, why, but why would you do it that way? Like from just a scientific pursuit, that just seems like such a disturbing quantity of, you know, uh, of, of handling it. Just guy, yeah. what do you think? Do y'all know who Charles Sport is? No. Um, back in the early 20th century, he was a collector of bizarre facts or bizarre occurrences. Mm. Uh, and they have a society called the Fortean Society uh, that has a website and they talk about all kinds of unusual things. Charles Ford had a theory that UFOs were actually living organisms. Ooh, okay. 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 I mean, they don't have to be, but like I can see them. I can see the idea of like something so smart that it could qualify in some weird context. Yeah, I can see it. So the way, the thing how I put this is, is um, science comes up with terminology to describe things as a model it's not a declarative statement it's sort of like a, a classification post post, post <clears throat> dealing with a bunch of data and so if we get something that blurs that line so badly then we'll have to come up with a better classification and that happens all the time and so if we Charles just get, Sagan wanted there to be aliens really bad and if we get like a piece of technology that's just like i can't tell the difference between this and organic being we're gonna have to come up with a different way to distinguish mm -hmm. the two though UFOs are an interesting concept because I do believe in UFOs. I do think unidentified flying objects are fairly mundane. It's just a question of whether or not they have alien origins that are the ones that, you know, rise an alarm with me. Larry, you're nodding your head. What do you think? Still on mute, my friend. Sorry. There we go. No, I was just going to say that unidentified flying objects are common. Mm. They're unidentified. We don't <laughs> know what they are. That's exactly right. I mean, they could be balloons. They could be uh, experimental aircraft. They could be weather Sparking phenomena. Sparkling lights in the, lie, in the, yeah, in the sky. Yeah, yeah. Lie, strange lightning. We don't yep. know. Uh, yeah. UFOs are comets. Uh, right. Alien aircraft, uh, not so much. Mm, very true. John Richards, do you have a thought on that? I, or have you ever seen a UFO? Would love to know. No, I haven't. But my mother was struck by lightning. <laughs> Okay, well, that's new information for me. Well, I hope she's. I hope she came out of it okay. Yeah, she was okay. Yes. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. As wow. a flying spaghetti monster, would that qualify as a UFO? Potentially. Would what qualify? Uh, this a flying, flying spaghetti, spaghetti monster? monster? Does it have potential <clears throat> of being identified as a UFO by those? Well, it could be misidentified as something other than the flying spaghetti monster. So yeah, yeah, certainly it could be. Like, that's it just could a ball be of rubber bands. A UFO. For those, for those who are, you know, not quite past a curious yet, <laughs> you know, past a curious person might misidentify the flying spaghetti monster as a UFO only because okay. they haven't figured it out yet. Okay. Okay. I also say this too, on the subject of aliens, they tend to in America be um, wrapped around two particular descriptions that are, that surround around two popular movies that have come out. Um, you have the gray men and you have the green men. And uh, when you ask people what does an uh, alien look like in, from the 1960s, they have very, very differing v points of view, like uh, purple skin, sparkling skin, horns, 14 legs, two legs. Then this movie comes out in the 1970s. And then next thing you know, you ask what people, an alien looks like. And they're like, big head, black eyes, short. Every single, every single version of it is almost on par with the same thing. Then yeah. another popular movie comes out immediately after with the green <clears> men. <throat> It's like it's green skin, but big heads and, and black eyes. I'm like, that is a very interesting notion. It, and I feel like religious stories tend to have a backbone in this same phenomena, in the mm -hmm. event that people can retell different stories in the same way to the point where people are convinced that they actually are true, that they've had a sure. experience themselves. There's like a common thread, right? Yeah. Larry, what do you think? 
um, it's like Dante's Inferno. I mean, the, mm. our common uh, view, our images of of hell and the devil come from Dante's Inferno, not yeah. from the Bible. Right. And it, but it's popularly held now. <clears throat> Correct. Yeah. yeah. It's Go misattributed on. to the Bible. Right. John yeah. Richards. Yeah. Right. It's um then they're much less fun than the aliens in the movies though aren't they the aliens in the Bible <clears throat> because uh, you you can run away from the aliens in the movies because you know that they can only walk slowly <laughs> or fight them <laughs> you've got a chase scene to to enjoy I did want to touch on this religious point again because I have seen people at like a gym. Some guy described like I once like lost a jacket and the guy's like, oh, I found my jacket. And I'm like, OK, great. And I'm like looking for the guy who found my jacket. And I'm, I'm like texting him because he texted me and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm the guy that looks like Jesus. I'm, I'm coming right behind you and I'm looking behind me and I see no one that looks like Jesus. And he's like, I look like Jesus. I'm like, OK, if you say so, just bring me my jacket. And then, so you know, a guy comes up to me and he's got long blonde hair. He's got blue eyes and he's got like a square jaw and he's got this little mustache thing going on. I'm like, <laughs> thank you for the jacket guy who thinks he looks like jesus like has he been to jerusalem <laughs> right yeah, yeah, yeah. wow yeah. but mm. if you go around and you ask people what is what does jesus look like they have that very classical look of the italian style jesus with the lean body six pack the marble-esque form and yeah, like yeah. very strong catholic approved italian features which are conspicuously italian roman in design despite the fact that you know he comes from a place where most people do not look like that whatsoever yeah mm. And but of course, if, if you went to uh, if you went to Taiwan or or uh, Japan, exactly, um, it's Japan Jesus up on yes. the cross there. And you I've know, seen got the eyes and yeah, mm. yeah, totally. In California, there's a Korean town, and I've seen Korean yeah. Jesus on the cross. Mm. And I've gone to well, not to Nigeria, but I have Nigerian family, and it's a much but un undistinguishably black Jesus. And yeah. it's not so much on a cross, but like it's not like a chiseled cross. It's just like a two slabs of wood. Anyway, it's actually branches. Anyway, yeah, yeah. go for it. John Richards. I, I've been to Soweto, you know, in South Africa. And in a Ooh. church there, they actually have a crib with a black Jesus. Nice. So it, it's all a cultural thing. And pre, nice. pre the, the Roman stories, we had the Greek stories. And they have, I can't remember the name of this particular god. It was a boy god who people think that the image of Jesus was derived from. But oh, he had sure. the golden curly hair of of uh, th that sort of uh, ethnicity right 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 dread you're already looking up something that you're gonna well no about. i was i was going to point out something just going back to the ufo thing um is that uh, recently uh, scientists <clears throat> have been working on the idea of communicating across interstellar space right i already so told you i saw contact and i like it why do you keep trying to like rub this in <laughs> Why do you keep trying to rub it in? It's okay. It's a good movie. No, 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 no. This is this is different. This is different. I was wrong. This is different. Um, they're they're actually uh, trying to determine whether or not the fidelity of uh, quantum communication across interstellar interstellar space can, you know, in effect, do something like subspace. Remember in Star Trek, they okay. could communicate much more instantly through subspace. And so um, this is a technology that uh, is, is possible. And, you know, say there were, um, you know, other intelligent uh, civilizations out there um, that they could potentially already be uh, beaming singles, signals at us. And we have just not developed the technology to receive them. Hmm. And that once we do, we may solve that Fermi paradox, like where's all the life? Sure. Um, because <clears throat> you know, it just may be it just may be that we don't have the right listening devices sure, uh, to put. hear the signals that are actually being out there. Sounds to me yeah. we need to invest more in science then in order to get closer to that than praying harder. Larry well, Rhodes. How about yeah, you? It's time out? for the break. Uh, we need to go ahead and do that. Uh, stay tuned though for the second half of the digital free thought radio hour on WOZO Radio. 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dowder Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. 
Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville for just a moment. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year and have over a thousand members. We have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria, excuse me. Uh, look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom Ask meeting. If you'd like to join us, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com and we'll send you the link. You can find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org. Mm. By the way, that if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. Wombat, well, where do you want to pick up? We're going to be talking about the Loch Ness Monster today. Mm. You know? And and I guess I guess I see the excitement, though... I, I I can't imagine anyone better to speak to it than our own John Richards. John Richards, what is Loch Ness Monster? How many times have you written on him, and how much, mm. how many uh, 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 <clears throat> songs are about him in the Grand Old UK? I guess he does belong to you since it's United Kingdom, right? Like, well, do you mind? It's a she. My bad. My <laughs> bad. Thank you for the Nessie. correction. Go for it. Listen, Go for you're it. talking about Nessie here, uh. <laughs> and 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 she is a great tourist attraction to the, the highlands of Scotland. <clears throat> I actually spent a few days in the summer of one mid sixties. I'm, I'm an old guy. So it was in the mid sixties, actually hunting, not for Nessie, but for Morak, who's the monster in the neighboring lock known as Loch Mora. And uh, unfortunately we didn't find her, but we had all the gear. We had side scans, sonar, we had boats with the, uh, um under the water cameras you know and, and I, mu had... I must ask a question so for the americans who are terrible at geography are you saying there's an actual place called lock and that ness is just the name of the monster in the lock is that how the convention <clears throat> works lock is the scottish for lake oh and my gosh. these these are particularly unusual lakes because they're very deep they have a, a v-shaped valley between high mountains okay and and there's a number of different locks and ness loch ness is one loch mora is another and there's there's a whole host of them they're, they're, they're plentiful okay oh that wasn't me that was my dog <laughs> could have been nessie she makes so a noise like could that could have been nessie so there's yeah, a lot oh okay go ahead dread what do you got what do you well, got you know, so it, certainly everyone's heard of Loch Ness uh, mm. or Nessie, but mm -hmm. um, here in British Columbia, uh, not too far from me, about two and a half hours is the Okanagan Lake. Mm. And that is purported to be the home of the Ogopogo, yeah. which is another sea monster, very much like Nessie in most mm. respects. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, similar... Um, Investigations have been uh, conducted over the years in Ooh. search of this uh, elusive yeah. creature. Well, well but, the story. Uh, in interestingly, um, there is a great deal of evidence that there is. It's a bit of an optical illusion, and it's it usually happens where, essentially, where the waves go um, in a harmonic pattern, okay. so that they actually. Um, you know they they you know um interfere with one another as mm -hmm. to create stronger undulations and then flat spots stronger undulations and flat spots mm -hmm. and uh, i've actually seen that myself um and uh you know it, it it is uh like if you just caught a glance of it or even if you know you kind of looked at it and didn't know what was going on um you would think it was a, an undulating creature mm. yeah well the, the the situation in Loch Ness is that lots of pictures and movies have been taken of mysterious effects, um, like Dred, Dred was saying, a, a wake traveling mysteriously across the top of the water. Sticks have been misidentified as, as uh, culprits. And but, hoaxes. Uh, and indeed, yes. But the most convincing still photograph, a black and white still photograph, showing this head rearing out of the water and moving yeah, yeah. along yeah uh, the the perpetrator of that 
admitted recently, well, not that recently, but it admitted in the near past that it was his toy submarine with a fake head stuck on it that he was radio controlling in order to create the effect. Yeah. And it was interesting, too, because without context, like without context and size, yes. you, you couldn't tell how big or small that yeah. uh, thing was in relationship right. to right. the other exactly. things around it. And the quality yes. of photography yeah. back in the day, right? Yeah, and yes. we need to make Especially a point that um, Loch Ness is not the name of the, the monster. It's the name of the lake that the monster yes. shows in anymore. Yes. Yes. Frankenstein yes. is, is not is yes. not the name of the monster. It's, Franken it's the name of the doctor who created the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Frankenstein. 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 There you go. Guys, I also want to throw out another thing too. It tends to be the case that these animals that uh, are pur or purported to exist tend to be analogous to animals that are not as incredible but are fairly mundane around the area. And I throw this out in the sense of there are snakes, right? If you go back as far as like even Norse mythology, there's the giant serpent, the world eating serpent, right? Mm -hmm. There are snakes in China. There's dragons in China. <clears> they <throat> look a lot like snakes. There are snakes, you know, everywhere. And if you if you go back to like some sort of ancient mythology, you'll find really cool snakes, except for areas where snakes aren't as common. Like if you go to Egypt has snakes, but they also have giant hippopotamus gods and crane gods. And mm -hmm. they don't have crane gods and hippopotamus gods in like uh siberia because those animals don't exist there in yeah. fact they have yeah. like ancient tigers and, <laughs> and ancient bear gods so it's just like it's cool that you can you can tie the the gossip down to the initial observation of hey i think i saw something in the distance was that a giant mystical being or was it just another snake well i'm going to make a story up and everyone else will have a reference point and then maybe mm -hmm. that becomes the new you know cultural hypnosis sort of thing that exists through the power suggestion only i feel like that's a very common thing that happens all around the world and we are susceptible to it but i never yeah. knew the like let nessie had a sister sister and mora no 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 no. she's only the one just the only one okay okay that works for me larry there could be only well, one you're talking about snakes being the origin maybe being the origin of dragons uh, myths it may also be fossils like you there know you you're go. a medieval farmer and you dig up a tyrannosaurus a skull or a raptor skull you can make up stories about you know mm. early dragons that uh, could fly and breathe fire yeah mm -hmm. that's a really fantastic point so like the i don't know what the um i don't know what the name of the dinosaur that looks the most like what we think the Loch Ness monster looks like like a giant reptilian long necked sort of monster what is it Alice Plesiosaur. Plesiosaur? Plesiosaur, yeah. Plesiosaur. okay I wonder chicken egg sort of situation because we were working with a blurry image of a silhouette of something that was basically a log and a bunch of submarines was that informed by the fossil or and then afterwards we sort of retroactively made it like a green monster that had like these flippy paddle arms because we only had that picture of its neck and head to work with. I just mm. wonder like the history behind that, but I could definitely see that as a uh, enforcing quality to get to where we are now with the Loch Ness Monster. We have a similar thing in the U.S. Uh, because we have, while, while we do also have fossils in the U.S., we also have very, very hairy people that just walk around in the woods on a, on a regular basis and that, and also people with big feet. And so we have this very, very, you know, color, I believe, image of a guy walking through the woods in a lumbering fashion. And what I propose is to most likely just a costume. But we've turned that into a whole cultural phenomenon of Bigfoot. You know, Harry and the Andersons, I don't know if you guys remember that, but that was a show about a family yeah. that adopted a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch. Um, that's been folklore as long as, as far as I'm aware, Western you know, uh, manifest destiny was occurring. So like, as you know, pioneers are going further out into the woods, they've been making claims of seeing like giant, you know, apes or monsters in, in, in the past, blue bison, stuff like that. So like, it's, it's, it's part and parcel with the American folklore. And so I wonder, I will go on a round table. Have you guys ever heard of Bigfoot? And what's your ideas behind that? And we'll get into the validity of it. So Dread Pirate, Bigfoot. Yeah. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. Canadian Bigfoot. More polite. Well, that's the Sasquatch. And so that, that comes from a, a you know a, a Native American or indigenous people's uh name for 
that sort of mythic creature. But um, yeah, you know, they made every attempt to identify one of those too. But, uh, you know, of course, what you don't see are any bones. You don't see any poop. Yes. And uh, you would expect to, you know, have other evidence, not necessarily, you know, my because I can, I know a bear's been there, but I may not have seen the bear, but I, I know that it's eaten berries because I can tell by its scat, right? Right. Uh, and so that, you know, it's, it's just, it's ludicrous that um, anybody could say with any certainty that Sasquatch exists when there isn't even evidence of its passing, let alone uh, a, a sound, you know, visual, um, other, other than blurry pictures, right? Mm. and videos and conventions and songs how dare you there's so much evidence out there i, I can show you a, i can show you at least 10 people who've seen <laughs> yeah yeah with their own eyes that's pretty yeah. good yeah how so, many how many anecdotes does it take to make a fact <laughs> the only problem the only problem with that quote and i wish it was true i wish it wasn't true but the people who can the people who can pronounce properly pronounce antidote may not understand the validity of that statement that you even make in the first place so it's like uh, as a metric to you know, right. justify yeah. a true conclusion john yeah. richards bigfoot versus sasquatch you know like the problem with uh, loch ness is they've already claimed that it was a fake video to begin with but that mystery is still unresolved in america so does that mean bigfoot's more possible what do you think well the thing is we all love to be scared and we don't get enough scaring these days in in our safe man-made environments you know and and it's it's a it's an adrenaline rush isn't it mm. you know we have the fight or flight reaction to unusual things and it's exciting that's yeah. why we go on roller coasters you know yes and, and so, so a story of a monster is always going to be an attractive proposition it's weird that it becomes a tourist attraction like did you hear oh. about the uncontrolled monster that lives in this part of the woods? I can't wait yeah. to go there. I'm going there this weekend. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh... Or spend the night in a uh, haunted house. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> you know, when I was in the Boy Scouts, we've actually had a brushing with a bear once that came through our campsite and like was brushing up against the tents. And we knew it was an animal, but like we were like just so freaking out that it was like, this is the coolest thing ever. We didn't now as an adult, I look back at it and be like, that was a dangerous thing that happened. But I did remember that we were like, we're going to call that bear Bigfoot. We're going to call it Bigfoot. We're going to all mm. agree that we saw Bigfoot, right? Okay, great. Let's go have fun. And just, we can see that we can make weird interactions with nature, uh, mm. pile on to the evidence of yeah, the, yeah. legend. Yeah. 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 John Richards, what do you think? Cause this is well, many, many years ago, when the school I was working at had a fundraising festival, it was to celebrate its first 10 years of existence. Mm. I turned the lower floor of the science department into a house of horror. Ooh. And I blacked it out and I had all sorts of creepy noises going on from a tape. I had an iguana in a cage. Oh, I had wow. Strobe lighting. And I had that people were groping through there in the dark. And they, suddenly they had to walk on a mattress, you know? So the whole thing was very spooky. And we earned 200 pounds in two wow. hours. Wow. At, wow. at that time, that was a lot of money. That, that still is a lot of money. I'd be happy with that rate. I have two questions. Why is a mattress spooky? And then also two, how confused was that iguana? <laughs> yes, it was very confused. Well, the mattress, the mattress was spooky because if you're walking along on a hard floor and yes. suddenly you're not walking on a hard floor, then that's spooky. Okay, I like, that's very I like the tactile version I mean, yeah, yeah, of yeah. that. Yeah. I just hope it wasn't a haunted house with like a mattress on the floor and like a strobe no, no, light it, and an iguana on a table. You're like, was, okay, I want my $5 back. <laughs> I want my five pounds back. Well, we actually had people queue and go around and keep coming through. Oh, wow. That's so cool. That's so cool. All right. Larry Rhodes, Bigfoot yep. in the heart of Tennessee. Have you ever seen it? And did you get its autograph? Uh, no, short answer. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, mean, I spent a lot of time in the woods when I was a kid. I used to do a lot of hunting and stuff, but no, no nothing even close. 
Now, do you think there's any validity to the idea of Bigfoot? Like, is it something that you think could actually exist? We have great apes. We have bonobos. There's well, if, it, if it is, it's going to be in some rarely explored area of, uh, of the world, like in the Congo or um, <clears throat> uh, south, you know, um, in the Amazon basin, you know, that type of thing. Because we, we've got so many uh, monitoring devices in so many places in North America that it's not going to be here. I mean, sure. Air, air surveillance and everything. No, it's not here. surveillance society. Right. <laughs> yeah, Joe Skyle. I'm, I'm gonna, Skyle. Throw up the same question to you. What do you think about the idea of Bigfoot? Is there any validity <clears throat> to it? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, I have watched some documentaries about sure. Bigfoot, and it seems like they're always like, "Oh, we just missed him." Right. He was here. He was here, but we missed him. See where that branch is broken? He was standing right there. <laughs> so it seems it seems like all the evidence is anecdotal. There's nothing like scat or real footprints. The footprints that were taken in plaster casts have been deemed a fake. So Gosh. I don't know. It, it, I think Larry's right. I think it'd be hard for something that big to just go without notice here in the States. So I do want, who knows, right? But I will yeah. say this, and Larry, you brought this up when we first met. I think one of the first comments we had when we did our radio show was there's a show called Finding Bigfoot. And back then it was in its first season. And right. you're like, and Larry, you said, I'm never going to watch an episode of Finding Bigfoot because when they found it, they won't have the show anymore. They won't call it yes. Finding Bigfoot anymore. And they are now officially in season 12. <laughs> mm -hmm. well it's the same with the ghost hunters uh, yeah, yeah. they'll go strong those dark dynasty guys to come and just shoot one and and every season i imagine is probably like oh we just missed them ah oh, we were so close well maybe better luck next season stay tuned yeah 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 so it's uh, know, surprising how gullible the uh, audience can be you know Here's the other thing too. It doesn't pro cost a lot of money to film an episode of Finding Bigfoot. It's just two no, guys in the woods right. in a barbecue at at the end of the day. That's it. Larry, what do you think? Yeah. And if they do find it or find a ghost, you don't have to watch the show to find out. It'll be in the papers. It'll be all <laughs> over the papers and all over yep. the news shows if they yep. ever did. It'll be we found Bigfoot the show, and it'll be like one episode. It'll be like an hour long <laughs> documentary, and it'll be followed up with the Nobel Prize, and then like everyone would just go home afterwards. The thing is. Yeah. I do think there's some validity to the idea of like big apes. Uh, if you want to see a Bigfoot, you can go to a zoo right now and see a bonobo, or you can go on YouTube and see a bonobo. I don't really yeah. like big smart animals in zoos anyway. Like so yeah. So like check them out in their own wild habitat. They're huge chimpanzees with body proportions, almost identical to a human being. They look, they look like a missing link though. They are not a missing link. They're just <clears> an off branch of our evolutionary path. But I do think it's really incredible that, we could make up something, right? Like an animal, like a Sasquatch without being informed of what an animal that looks like an actual animal that, that actually is walking around in Africa. Like Native Americans had a, an impression of Sasquatch. They, they, they impressioned it on people. And then, you know, pioneers of America took it on and we made this whole cultural phenomenon of Bigfoot. And meanwhile, there's an actual species of them roaming around in Africa and no one cares about that. They just want that one that's in America roaming around somewhere. I'm just like, if you like that, yeah. look on YouTube. There, they, Those things exist. They're just not here. That's the, that's the only thing. That's the only thing you have to admit. And, and you can still have the thing that you want. Would a Loch Ness monster that existed in Lake Michigan be as popular as the one in Scotland? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. But I feel yeah, actually, like... supposed to be one in Lake Michigan. <laughs> yeah, it's just it pride at that point. Yeah, if you want a monster that's a tourist attraction, you need to plant it somewhere near a large population that exactly. might want to travel to you. Right, right. And if, you know, we had an alien that came from Uranus and there was like, we are super proud of Uranus and we really want to talk about Uranus all the time. <laughs> and we're all about Uranus. We want to get all the way up in there. It's just like, yeah, you guys aren't the aliens we wanted. Sorry. We were, <laughs> we were hoping for something a little better than that. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, we're going back to Uranus. It's like, I hope that means what I think you mean. Bye. <laughs> 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 anyway hey guys i think we had a really good show 
We talked about Bigfoot. We talked about UFOs. We had some discussion on Loch Ness. The main thing is the things that are the backbone for why these folklores are still alive and kicking around today are also the same pillars that hold up religion and, and dogma. It's essentially just lack of critical understanding and questioning. And if we apply mm -hmm. the same tools that we applied in this discussion for UFOs, uh, Loch Ness funds from Bigfoot, we'd actually find that it's the same tenets that are being held up for our <clears throat> concepts of Jesus and gods all around the universe or world. What do you think, John? Don't forget, and a desire to be entertained. And a desire to be oh, entertained. Yeah. A desire to be entertained because there's no one worshiping the boring God. Everyone wants the one that likes <laughs> those lightning bolts or floods yes. towns when they're angry, stuff like that. The one that just reads Wikipedia articles every day, no one worships that God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No one worships the semi-powerful. The semi-powerful, right? You, you got to go for the all-powerful. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, very true. Very true. There's no discount gods that are on <laughs> any worshiping pillars. <laughs> Dread, where can we find your stuff at? Well, you can find me uh, Sunday mornings here on my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. I live stream it at eight a or 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Cool. And then usually do the GAN review, the Global Atheist News Review at 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time. But uh, I won't be there today because I have a wedding to perform. Yay. Oh, nice. He's got to put on a wedding. Yeah. Nice. Well, congratulations to your lucky couple, Dredd. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. Turns out yeah. to be my accountant's daughter. So nice. Oh, cool. yeah. You know, the more you do, maybe, the maybe they'll give me a discount. Right. The more yeah. you do, the more mm -hmm. you normalize. The more it's normalized, the more we can get, pro yeah. you know, progress to like Ooh. uniform distribution of rights across Absolutely. all religions. There you so go. That. Sky, mm -hmm. any, uh, not... we're looking for a good community on Facebook. What would you plug for skeptical thinkers? Um, well, I'm going to throw in a little bit of a plug here. Uh, one of the groups that I write for is called Normalizing Atheism. Nice. And they have some really good conversations on there because they, uh, the theists found it and uh, it's turned into another debate group, but it's a good debate group. It's, it's got a pretty good vibe. Nice. What's the name of the group? Normalizing Atheism. Okay, okay. I've always, my problem is, is whenever I search for that, I always get into normalizing abnormalism. And it's just the weirdest group ever. It's just like paradoxes all over the place. I don't know how to get it. But normalizing atheism. Stay away from the, the paradox groups. John Richards. Yeah, well, I'm on Freethought Channel. It's not just me now, you know. I have a co-host in the form of Tercia Duplessis, who's based in South Africa, but is actually visiting the UK right now. Oh, very cool. Visit. Yep, yep. And uh, I also have uh, Swedish Steve behind the scenes doing all the production and other contributors, including DP Higgs, who, who now gives us reports to Global Atheist News from Canada. Oh, about very the, cool. About the religious items of news that are going on in that part of the world. Nice. So we, we've got a number of shows and we're branching out. There will be more shows coming soon free thought channel we had a lovely chat yesterday with um what's his name weigold doctor i've forgotten his first name weigold who is a californian psychiatrist he, cool. it's well worth watching and listening to him. scott weigold yeah take John, a look there's at no that. there's no doubt in my mind that you have at least 72 hours worth of content now you could probably just have a rolling channel on free thought hour that's just <laughs> always streaming a content that you just insert new shows into the playlist as I it could keeps, do. yeah yeah does a live I, broadcast I, you could offer we can even offer 286 shows on this from this uh yeah. venue yeah yeah those. basically just like hey mm -hmm. it's a live channel you can just turn mm -hmm. it on and it's just constantly broadcasting yeah. and then yeah. new episodes at these hours on the yeah, hour yeah. and then yeah, play next. keeps rotating yeah play next yeah, Ooh, yeah. Play. no i mean like a live broadcast like twitch we'll talk about this we'll have a conversation uh you can find me i'm let's chat i'm on youtube and if you need to reach out to me feel free to do so in the youtube comments we'll be happy to discuss your questions in next week's episode and before we head out we'll throw it up to our own larry Rhodes doubter five 
to explain to us what atheism is and what it's all about because he hasn't done it yet and i don't know why he thinks souls exist but he's really gonna have to clarify this point with me i have a lot of skepticism well i uh i wrote it down it's kind of hard to go into with three minutes of the show left but i have a book out it's on amazon there it is uh called atheism what's it all about so check it out uh hope you enjoy it you can also go to my my website my, my blog that has an awful lot of the articles from the book on that site it's digitalfreethought.com be sure to click on the blog button if you have any questions for the show send them to us at ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com and we can answer them on future shows um you can find this show on podcasts everywhere just search for digital free thought radio hour and if you're watching this on youtube be sure to like and subscribe remember everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real until then don't sweat it enjoy your life and we'll see you next week say bye everybody bye bye man and that's a wrap